Hey, what's up, guys? How are you? Welcome back to the OS Rick Project, episode 37. Yeah, <laughs> I had to check. How are you guys? I hope you're doing wonderful. Um, welcome to the show. This is a little podcast. I get to get, I get together. I get here. I'm gonna start all over again, guys. What's up, guys? How are y'all? Welcome back to the OS Rick podcast. Hope you're doing well. Um, welcome to the show. Um, whether you're on your way to work, at work, working out. Thank you for listening. I appreciate it, guys. Um, I'm going to talk about some stuff. Not too much of things. Not too much things going on, but just, you know, some stuff here and there. Um, what you guys been up to? Which I've been playing, which I've been watching. Uh, I know The Last of Us just recently had their premiere. Uh, the first episode was, uh, it was, it was, it was, I really thought it was just going to be like the basic, you know, 60 minutes, but it was a little bit, lo it was longer than that. It was like a, the length of a movie, which was pretty cool. Uh, I, th I think that's the way to go when you want to, you know, when you have a story to tell. Uh, what else has been going on, guys? I've been playing Last of Us. That way I could talk shit about it. So when I play it and hate it, because you know that one person, you know, you talk about, you talk to them about a game. They're like, hey, did you play this? Like, no, this game sucks. I'm like, have you played it? No. You know, see, I don't want to be that guy, guys. I mean, like, I kind of am sometimes with with some games, but, like, with this one, like, the, some of the big ones that everybody has an opinion on, I was like, you know what, let me play the game. That way, when I, when I, when I tell you it sucks, I mean, I'll, I'll let you know why, right? Uh, what else been going on? Um, Crisis Core, still playing that game. I think the story kind of stinks, but the gameplay is fun. And what else? Monster. I did Monster Hunter last week. I haven't done it this week. I, I plan on, I'm probably going to say that to be, like, my weekend game, guys, because that one... I swear, like, I do one hunt, it's like time travel. It's like 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 an hour passes by. Like, dude, I just did one hunt. But, you know, the time you go, you prepare, you find things, you explore the area, start go getting some mining nodes and, and gather some materials. You hunt smaller animals for items you need to craft more armor and weapons. Like, uh, I'm saving that one for the weekend. What else, guys? Uh, you know, the basics, exercising, work, um, work on stuff for the podcast. Oh, I got my PC stuff coming in. The only thing I need now, so I did some rebudgeting, guys. I moved some things around. I sent back I sent back the, um, the, the, the memory, the RAM. I went, changed it to, it was at 3,200 megahertz. So I, I, I moved it and I got a, a one for 3,600 megahertz. Apparently that works better for the Ryzen 5 5600X. So, I mean, same price. I just went to Amazon, returned it, got the other one. That was good. Um, I did return the two terabyte storage for the M dot, the Samsung, uh, Samsung M.2 SSD drive or SSD, SSD drive, SSD. I returned that because you know, there's there's other brands that you can look around. You get a good price, and I, and like I said, after rebudgeting, looking around, crunching some numbers, I could I could turn back. I could re I returned that SSD. I was able to get two other smaller ones. One's like a 250 slash 500. I still got to do some research because I was looking at some kinks and ones. But by the time I got the refund back, some of them are out of Amazon Prime. Like they won't get until like here to the end of the month, which. If worse comes to worse, I will wait. But if I could get something with them, maybe a little, uh, a little bit higher, more expensive, that's fine. I just I want to keep everything sub, around, sub twelve hundred dollars. That's where I want to keep it for like a nice mid mid range gaming PC. I already talked. I already told you about the specs that I have and everything. But all I need now, so returning that that ter that two terabytes. I plan on getting two more smaller SSDs and a fan cooler. Like I was looking at one of the Noctua ones priced around like sub $50. So because the stock cooler might be fine, might be okay, but I don't want it to, uh, but I want it, I want something that's, that's, that like, if it put me over the budget, then I would stay with the stock cooler. But since I have a little bit more wiggle room, I figured I might as well upgrade that, you know, so We'll see how that goes, but like I said, I just gotta do some, a couple more research, a little bit more researching on, on the drives on Amazon because I want to make this also the project to be like, look, you can get everything, just on Amazon. You don't feel, don't feel like you have to drive across town to go to different stores and different areas. Like if you do enough research and you look around and find some deals and be patient, 
you get some stuff too. And the thing is, I was pricing around the, the GPU that I bought two weeks ago. It's already coming up in price. So yeah, apparently with all the, the with the, 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 the newest iterations from NVIDIA and AMD, their, their GPUs, you know, the, 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 the 30 series and other stuff is, 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 is starting to get bought up. So you have to like, it's, 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 it, looking for GPUs. It's, it's always, it's, it's so volatile. It's always changing. So always keep your eyes peeled for that stuff, guys, but that's coming along. Um, just a little bit more research, a little more pricing and that piece should come together. And then I plan on putting it together myself and fingers crossed. Hopefully uh, it, it should go fine, right? There's so much information you can find on YouTube that, I mean, not only if you need help building a PC, but just anything, right? Um, changing a tire, um, uh, disconnecting the P-trap from the sink, um, uh, you name it, you know, building a computer, uh, finding a walkthrough. I mean, it just, there's, there's the information is out there, guys. You just have to lick it. Lick it. You just look for it. So uh, that's about it. Uh, what else? I've been watching Trigon Stampede. The CGI sometimes is a little, like, takes me out of it, but it's okay. Uh, I, I feel like getting to watch Vash again is, is, is freaking awesome. I love it. Even if it's in CGI form and it's not too jarring where it, like it completely takes out of it. You just gotta like, okay, it's CGI. It's not hand animation, which is fine. Um, but I've been, I've been having fun with that. I'm already caught up with Chainsaw Man. And then I got to watch another one that my buddy Tofu told me about called, um, the witch of Mercury, one of the Gundam series. So I gotta get back on that. Um, but right now, like, if you want to watch things, there's, there's, there's definitely options. That's for sure. So, um, let's get right into it guys. So now that we know that the Google stadium is closing, um, Google stadium, I mean, right from the get go, I didn't know who are they trying to target? It's like, so you could stream video games from any Chrome Google device. Okay. But like, like again who, who who are you trying to target like the casual gamers people that don't want to spend money on a console or something maybe it's because they thought or one of the reasons that that, that looked that might have been in, uh, enticing to get was that you know when you couldn't find consoles but of course we know consoles are written I mean, and i checked myself guys i literally went to best buy looked at the playstation 5 you could get it like get it from your store tomorrow of course they bundle it with like god of war or horizon zero dawn which is fine i mean i i i have a friend who who got the horizon zero dawn bundle and has yet to do download the game he just wanted it so he could get a console and it happens it's fine yeah but the google stadia though like when it, when it got when i first heard about it and 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 heard and 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 saw what it was what it was supposed to do i was just like i didn't know like if you want a casual gamer if you're trying to like get that target like that audience is like i don't think that's they're, they're gonna it's gonna be on their radar they're gonna know oh yeah just basic console whatever they're, they're probably still playing playstation 4s the, the the previous gen uh, the, the Xbox One, and maybe if they still, you know, maybe they find a, a Nintendo Switch because Nintendo Switches, like, honestly, are have always. I mean, I think that's the, they're like the best selling consoles because they've always been around. The only time they were like hard to get was when they first launched back in 2017. So, I mean, they've been out for a minute, and that's another discussion we could go and talk about later, another episode. But you know, is the Switch ending the end of its cycle? It's it's. It's 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 getting there, and my when I know I'm going on a tangent here, guys. But for the switch, the only way for it to like for for the competitors to like not worry about it is just keep getting bigger and better because the switch is going to be limited to to just the the size of its of its hardware, right? Uh, Sony. Xbox, they could they continue to make bigger and bigger consoles. Uh, the Switch is stuck to where it's at. Maybe you know, like what they did with the OLED, where you can increase the battery size, the capacity, you know, the storage, the the size of the screen. Maybe add some Bluetooth features. But beyond that, I mean, just the other companies, Sony and Microsoft, all they got to do is just keep making bigger and bigger um, consoles and games, and they're gonna leave the Switch on the dust. At the same time, you know, Nintendo probably doesn't care. They have their own proprietary systems. They they, they got 
they got four franchises that everybody's always going to get. You know, Zelda, Mario, um, Metroid, Kirby, um, name it. Any, any, anything that's Nintendo franchise, they know what they got. And we've seen how they treat their communities. But that's not here. That's neither here nor there. But anyways, yeah, the Google Stadium. I just never knew who they were gonna the, the, like. Who the target was? Uh, the casuals probably didn't care, and the people who are like really into gaming. Me personally, I just I I've never been a fan of of streaming video games, um, cloud versions of games. I I I, I don't that never in, it enticed me. It never excited me. It never made me want to like want to check it out because, you know. At any time, don't get me wrong, I got a, a, a solid connection, you know, nine out of ten times. But sometimes that one day when the internet it doesn't, isn't, you know, is acting up, if I can't play my games, like, what's the point? You know, at least with, you know, the Switch, I could just play the game. Uh, same with Steam. I got the game downloaded. Maybe I can't play, you know, live service games, games as a service. But you could still play something, you know. Those other games... When you have to stream it, forget about it. And then you're eating up your bandwidth, if, especially if you you know have it limited. I mean, that could be a, a big issue. But with the Stadia closing down, it, and it launched originally, guys, back in 2019 in November. So it's been out. Okay, it's 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 been around, but I never do. I don't know anybody out of all my friends that 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 play video games. I have never heard anybody talk about the Stadia. Anybody and like nobody. Same with Brawlhalla. You ever ask any? But like you see, like a lot of people talk about it or, or play it. But then you ask somebody, like I don't know anybody that plays Brawlhalla. Anyways, guys. But yeah, apparently they're gonna Google's gonna add some uh, some features. They're gonna add some Bluetooth features to the controllers, which is cool because yeah, that would suck if you know the controller is just a complete waste. Because I mean, at the end of the day, I'm sure the controller you could use it if you had one. If you were a sucker to get one um you know at least now you can use the controller for you know when you play your online games or when you play the steam or any online pc games so yeah r.i.p google stadium we're not gonna miss you um there's another game that i've been keeping my eye on and well by keeping my eye on i mean i've been watching some of our friends play it and talk about it as uh, callisto protocol uh watching the stream like you know it had some issues at launch you know the reviews didn't come out until the to the day of release um what else that was kind of like the reviews that weren't released what else i'm blanking on it right now guys but there was like a whole bunch of things you know uh, they had day one patches uh, which is kind of the norm nowadays right for a lot of these triple a games you know getting download performance patches has to help with the stuttering or whatever issues that net whatever issues that i'm sorry guys i'm my mouth is running faster than my brain i gotta slow down breathe right tranquilo where you know they release these big patches just to smooth out the game but you know with all that um it, it, uh, according to Crafton, the developers, I think they're like like Korean developers. They do like a lot of mobile games, which would explain, which would explain the controls like dodging, because dodging is basically on the stick, hold left, hold right, hold left, hold right. Like, I mean, and I'm not saying like activate it at a certain time, like a certain like a prairie window, like you have a little window of activation. No, it's just like just hold left and then hold right. And then the character will just kind of dodge laughter, right? It's like, I mean, that seems like that could be like on a mobile game, something simple and, and, and basic, but like on a full on, like a full on triple A budget game, like you figured you'd have some more complexity, at least to keep the player engaged more. And when I was watching my friend play and he would talk about that a lot, like he was just like, dude, I'm just flickering. I'm just flicking the stick, dude. That's all I'm doing. I'm just flicking this stick, and it's and it's and it's totally BS because he would still get mobbed by a freaking by a, by the extra ads that come out come out and and attack him. But apparently, Crafton was hoping to sell five million copies, but sold only two million, and the development budget was a hundred and sixty eight million dollars. And I remember hearing about this game back in, I want to say E three of twenty twenty two. I want to say then. It could be some other. It could have been before that, but I want to say for, I want to say it was that time, 
Um, I mean, it, it, I, I think right from the get go, everybody said, you know, it's a, it's a, um, um, a Dead Space clone. It's a Dead Space, you know, inspired game. It's Dead Space esque or something like that. And I think it was like part of the team that broke off. I could be wrong here, guys. So look it up yourself. I, I, I might be just talking out of my ass. I'm really good at that, by the way. Uh, apparently, it was some other team that broke off and did their own thing and wanted to make their own game in their own way. I don't know. I could be wrong. Um, but, anyways, the game just, I mean, like I said, what I see, looking at the game, it looked fine. Okay. But actually playing the game, uh, I guess that could have been a different story. Um, and it's, it's a thing, right? I, I, I know I have some friends where they say, you know, I, I like just to go through the walkthroughs. That way I could just enjoy the game that way. And that's one aspect of enjoying the game because you could just, you know, if you don't want to invest all, you know, your, your 60 hard-earned dollars into it, which is understandable, you know, it's something you you're like might be interested in, but you don't want to invest all that money. You know, looking through playthroughs like on streams on Twitch or on YouTube or just looking at walk uh, walkthrough videos. I mean, that's one way to enjoy the video. But me, you know, if it's something that I really want, really want to enjoy and really get into, you know, I'm going to uh, put the money up front and play the game because playing the game is, is, is a lot different. But again, you know, it varies person per person. You know, if you don't want to put the money, eh, just watch it that way. But yeah, um, Callisto Protocol, I mean, like I said, it, it looked like a fine game, but when I watched my friend play, like he he just sounded like there were some parts where he was just getting frustrated and took some breaks from the game and then came back later to play it. But um, I don't know. I don't, I don't I don't know what the lesson here is. I mean, I guess when it comes to these big games and and they're not having the reviews right away or or they're just very hush hush about it and not giving too much information until the day of release maybe that's a, a sign um but i'm pretty sure in this business we're going to see lots more of that it's not going to be the it's not going to be the first or the last more stuff like this happens and i forgot to get a water guys give me one second I was not prepared. Oh, and by the way, guys, I'm trying to like, change the schedule again. I'm, like, I know it's been Mondays for the longest. I'm trying to get back to like putting it on Wednesday nights, Wednesday evenings, early Thursdays or something like that. But we'll get the scheduling down anyways. But yeah, Callisto Protocol underperformed. Um, I know two people that played it. Out of all my friends that play video games, it was just those two. Um, did you guys know anybody that played it? Did you play it? Did you enjoy it? What were your thoughts on it? Um, I think they said like in February they're going to ha- um, sell some, they're going to have some features to, I don't know if they're going to provide it for free or it's going to be some sort of, you know, uh, some 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 stuff, some, some, some sort of content that you could purchase. I, I, was, I don't want to call it microtransactions because to me that goes hand in hand for like, you know, cosmetic stuff. But, you know, I heard there's going to be some transactions you could buy like a, a difficulty level or stuff like that. I'm not too sure. I got to look that up again. But it just feels like, man, it, this does feel like this is this is what happens when you get like a, you know, like a mobile game studio developer and then just trying to like milk the audience out of the money. I don't know. Um, speaking of the Callisto Protocol, uh, um, space horror survival, Dead Space is coming out on the twenty seventh, and I've talked to some of my buddies, and they're they're they, they keep telling me, Rick, you need to stream this game. I'm like, oh, you guys want to see me shit myself in in front of the camera, in front of in front of an audience? Okay. Um, but that Dead Space is coming out, um, releasing on the 27th, and on pre-orders, if you pre-order it on Steam, you will receive Dead Space 2. So I don't know if this is with all consoles or just Steam. Look that up, guys, uh, and, and tell me about it. But I saw that if you get it on Steam, you will get also a copy of Dead Space 2, which is pretty cool, honestly, if you think about it. And honestly, I don't know, I mean, if this is a trend, if this starts a trend where developers sell you like the sequel, like bundle the sequel into purchasing a game like that, I think that'll be a good move, right? Just that way for first time players, 
first time buyers um they could get you know if they enjoyed the first one they could try the second one only the first one's getting remade i think the second one is still um the original game i think i'm pretty sure but i do like that i mean getting a free game of, of the sequel that's 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 that's, that's the way to go and I, again i think it's a good way for to bring in the audience that way if they do like that game here's the second one and then you can start making a fan because didn't they make three of them and I, from what i heard I, when i can recall my very limited memory the first one was really good and then the rest were kind of like oh, okay but again i'm not too sure i have to look that up um I know it's being it's from EA, and I kind of want to play this game. But the thing is, EA I know they have their own launcher. If I do get this game, it'll probably be on console. Which what I plan that's what I plan on doing with Jedi, with uh, Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars, Jedi Survivor. Survivor. I I did get Fallen Order when it was on sale on pc but it has an orange launcher and i'm sure some people are, 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 are probably rolling their eyes at me saying whatever rick it's just a freaking another launcher don't worry about it you'll be fine but me like i just want everything under one banner under one launcher that way it's just ready to go um so if i do i'm jumping subjects here guys because uh Je jedi fallen order when i got it I was like, oh, you got to have the freaking uh, EA Origin launcher running and all that good stuff and add something like great. So with Fallen Order, or Jedi Survivor, if I do get it, which I probably will because I, I enjoyed the first one. I think the first one did the exploration really good. Uh, getting the, get, Going around and getting the power-ups, that was fun. I mean, it kind of sucked. Like when you find something and they're like, oh, here's another colored poncho or, or a colored skin for your ship oh, okay cool you know but getting the power-ups and actually like traverse and like like finding new areas and 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 and, and unlocking new things and discovering new air uh discovering new, new parts of the map that was fun i did like that part it, because and when you're playing the game like if you got to a puzzle the game would say, "Hey, would you like a hint now?" It wouldn't just blare out like, "Hey, you need to do this. You need to put the round, the round ball, in the round hole." Like, no, it tells you like, "Hey, do you want a clue?" And that I do enjoy. Um, <sighs> I gotta slow down, guys. I gotta slow down. Like, like Rick, you got time. It's okay. Like, I, sometimes I still think like, like I'm in, like I'm, I'm in a race or like I'm at work and I gotta get things done. Like, no, it's okay. Chill. Chill, chill. Get your, get your thoughts collected and just let it go. Again, guys, I mean, I know I'm like 37 episodes into this podcast, but I'm still having to like rein myself in like chill, tranquilo. It's okay. Don't, 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 don't speak too fast where your audience has to be like, wait, what'd you say again? Because I know like people who, who like, who are around me a lot, you know, I, I tend to talk really, really fast. And like, what'd you just say? Especially when I used to drink. They're like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> but, um, yeah, Dead Space coming out. I, I, if I do get it, it'll be on console. Just because, because like, the games that I know that have their own launchers from their own companies, uh, I just, I just, I just don't like that. And, and that's, I mean, that's, a, and that's another reason why, uh, you know, you could visit your PlayStation 5. You know, the PlayStation 5, I don't play it all too often, but it does have, it does, it does run really good. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a solid machine. The performance is great. I have no issues with it, especially with, you know, a lot of these games now where, you know, you have the option of going like quality mode or performance mode. And me, I prefer performance can the game just go 60 frames per second on my monitor, which is the 1080p uh, Zowie BenQ, which, you know, 1080p for me is, is still fine. I don't have no plans on going into 1440 or 4K. So, you know, for what it is now, I'm fine. I have no issues. Um, maybe if I saw like a 1440 monitor next to my 1080p, if I could spot out the big differences, maybe that'd be worth me trying out. But for right now, I, I like my monitor a lot. I just feel like it's 
it's it's it's it's at the, it's at the sweet spot um what else guys uh ubisoft guys would y'all believe me if i told you i've never played a ubisoft game in my life I never played Watch Dogs. Never played a Far Cry. Never played an Assassin's Creed. None of them. None of them. I think I download. Um, what's the one that the shooter that everybody plays? Uh, Rainbow Six. I did download it once. I was like, okay, I heard a lot of good things. I'm gonna download it. And, but that's when I had like a potato laptop. And then I downloaded it, and I was like, you know what? I don't think I want to play this. But I mean, I, I bought it like I'm like it was like dirt cheap it was like dirt cheap but then i was like you know what i don't know like i said I, I purchased it i have it in my library but i never maybe i should play that one right they have a whole bunch of interesting characters they like to virtue signal for shit i don't know um but yeah they, they say they're delaying skull and bones like somehow this doesn't surprise me especially the track record that they've been having again guys i don't play their games i just watch other people play them um you know, I I seen when when, especially the newest iterations of Assassin's Creed where they start going with the whole open world. You know, I see my friend Ruben play uh, Valhalla for, uh, when it first came out. I saw him playing it, and it didn't look that much different from any other open world game, right? You know, you got your map that has littered with a whole bunch of things to look at. You're constantly being pulled to do side quests, little mini games here and there. Um, little art and body like a talent you know you have your talent trees to spec into whatever you want maybe like a, a a brawler or something stealthy or some sort of cash or something but the ubisoft games and even then uh i know they had some other games like the division um but that was like more of a game of a game as a service i believe uh which again doesn't doesn't interest me at all and then i remember they had their that br the very short-lived one like hyperscape uh, I could go on a whole tangent about battle royales because I think they're complete garbage. I mean, I, if there's on, if there's one that I would be interested in playing, it'd probably be like PUBG. Um, the other ones, I feel like they're just, just trying to just, just constantly hit you with battle passes and and, and cosmetics just to get your money. And look, I spent money on microtransactions before, but. So I mean I'm not trying to be all high and mighty, but these other these other battle royales, I mean they know exactly what they're doing, especially with all the crossover skins. Like, oh come on guys, do something original, do something interesting, do something fun. Um, what else? Um, you guys been keeping up with multiverses? You remember that game, that fighting game from WB that has like IPs from. Everything is that game still good? And still fun? Is anybody playing it? Uh, you know, I saw this game when it first came out. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Another Smash clone. Um, I, I mean, right now, right now, if you just look at how many people are playing, it's still a good chunk of. Uh, uh, still, ch I mean, some games would kill to have that kind of player base. But of course, it's not the same as when it first launched. I think. And I was talking to my friend about this, about, you know, fighting games. And I come out and I'm, and I'm approaching this as a fighting game, uh, as a fighting game player, you know, that, that, that's, that's one of my, my favorite genres. You know, I, I think when you use the free to play model, that's a good way to get people to come, you know, to come to your product to, you know, you know, to make them look at it because of course it's free to play. I mean, the only thing that's going to cost you is, you know, maybe, you know, you sign up for your email or, you know, sign up for something and then you download it and then, you know, you're, you're ready to play. No, no financial investment at all. It's just a little bit of your time to download it and then just play the game. And if you like it, you like it, you don't, you don't, it's fine. You know, so I could see how the free to play model and I'm, Again, guys, I'm coming at this as a fighting game player and, and as for when it comes to fighting games. You know, I'm not talking about it. I'm not talking about for BRs or I'm not talking about it for um, uh, MOBA games or any other games. I'm just in the strictest sense of a fighting game. And yes, Multiverses isn't a traditional fighting game, but we, we could put it under that umbrella of fighting games you know kind of like similar to smash and brawlhalla and stuff like that okay 
So I was talking to my friend about this, and 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 and, and he agreed that you know being a free to play model is a good way to get people to the door, but to have them stay there, I think you gotta have solid gameplay, solid mechanics, um, and and the game has to be fun. I think that has to be number one key to have your game successful, to, to have the, a constant player base. I mean, we've seen it with Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Tekken. Yes, these games still have the older, the older style of monetization where, I want to say monetization, but the, 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 the financial, the, the, how do I say guys? I I don't have the right word, sorry. But you know, the, their financial model has always been pay the, you know, the, the 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 40, 50, 60 bucks up front and here's the game. Along the way we'll have some updates and then we'll have some and and recently since Street Fighter 4, you know, uh they've been introducing we're going to have character battle passes and stuff like that. But just set aside the character passes, right? The, the, for the most part, ever since Street Fighter Two, Street Fighter Two, Street Fighter Two Turbo, Street Fighter Two Championship Edition, you know, ever since then, you know, it was you pay the upfront, the the upfront, you pay the price for the game, and here's the game. Uh, mind you, back then, you know, they had so many versions of the game because you know they just didn't have technology to to update it, right? But now it feels like you know you 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 pay the upfront cost, play the game. And especially those three titles, they have they've been around. They're they're like legacy fighting games. They've been around for so long. They have a big, they have a player base. I want to say big player base, but compared to you know your your your, your esports games, it's only a fraction of that. And it's fine. I don't want fighting games to be esports. Not at all. I I think esports are is something else. I I personally do not like esports, um, especially not for fighting games. I like I want the players to get money. I want them to make a living out of it, but at the same time, I don't want the whole scene to become that. Like if if, if you're that good that you could you could you can like if you're in the top one percent of fighting game players that you can make money, that's great. I, I'm I'm all for it. Get get your bread, dude. But I don't want it the whole scene to become like you know you could be the next esports player for uh, X fighting game. But you know those three games they they've been around. They have good mechanics. Solid, so, solid fundamentals. I mean, and it's fun gameplay. You know, me personally, I'm more of a Street Fighter fan. I, I've been a fan of Street Fighter since, since forever, and I'm I'm excited for Street Fighter Six to come around. I'm excited for Street Fighter. I mean, for Tekken Eight to come around. Mortal Kombat, uh, not so much. I'm not a, I'm not a big NRS fan, and that's just me. I, I know Mortal Kombat's big, but when it comes to fighting games, again, I don't I don't, I, and I'm not saying I want every game to be where you have to, you know, pay up front for the base game and then, you know, you pay extra for the, the you know, character passes later. I'm just saying I don't expect that model, that free-to-play model to play f- to fit for every fighting game. Just like, you know, like what I just said, I don't expect every game to be, you know, pay up front. There's, there's, some games can pull that off. But, and right now the biggest but is... Project L's from Riot, from Riot Games, Project L. That's gonna be the biggest one, and I, I could I could bet you money, dude. I could bet you money. That's gonna be that's gonna have s- insane amount of freaking concurrent players when it comes out, because you're not only are you getting the, the people from the fighting game community, you're getting people from the league community, you're getting people from the esports communities. They're all gonna have eye on this. They're gonna play this. The the numbers are gonna be huge. Now. I don't know if Riot releases those numbers of how many people are playing. I don't know if they are able to show those numbers in a certain light to make it look very flattering. I don't know. I don't play um, Riot games. I, I did play a little bit of League of Legends when it first came out, guys. Because my friends were telling me it's free to play, blah, blah, blah. It's fine. Um, but... Honestly, mobile is just never, never just excited for me. Of course, that was a long time ago. Maybe if I got into it, tried one now, I would get into it. But I honestly, in principle alone, just the way how they're just ran, um, and I'm just not a big fan of the politics and uh, of of Riot game myself. So I wouldn't touch it. And honestly, with Project L, as excited as I am, as excited as I was about it first coming out. 
just knowing that it's from Riot, just it just doesn't sit well for me. I, and I don't know. I'm, I'm sure there's some people who are, are totally fine with it. They don't care. They're going to sign up. It's cool. But me, I just, Project L is... I'll 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 be the person that watches, but as for actually getting it, probably not. But again, guys, um, it was just something I wanted to bring up um, about multiverses because, like I said, it came out in September. It was you know the buzz because they have all these characters from all these different IPs, cool. But then now it's like I don't. Hear, again, I don't hear anybody talk about it. And that's just me. And I asked my other friends who play fighting games, and they know a couple of people who casually play it, but that's about it. So uh, we'll see. Um, what else? Um, Non-video game stuff. I did work on my little my my Warhammer minis. That was fun. That was cool. Trying different colors, different schemes. I actually did a couple of um, streams where I was assembling some of my miniatures and painting. Uh, not painting them, but, you know, yeah, a little bit of painting. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't painting the colors, but I was, you know, applying some of the primer. Um, that's fun. Uh, guys, let me know if you're interested in stuff like that. I mean, like, again, I love video games, but sometimes, you know, just being to, being able to get my hands on something and, and like a tangible item, figurine and paint and a brush and able to just, you know, and, and chit chat with you know and talk to chat and, and and just share my experience that's fun i like that a lot guys and i want to do more of that i do want to bring i kind of want to like i've been getting into the whole uh, war cry game from warhammer i do eventually i want to sit down with my wife my friend travis and just kind of brainstorm some ideas maybe stream some things i don't know guys i don't know if you guys would be interested in it but that's that's for down the road um and as for The Last of Us, that's the big one, guys. Um, did y'all see the first episode, the premiere from the HBO series, The Last of Us? Um, what did you think of it? Did you enjoy it? Have you played the games? Um, if you haven't played the games, did this show make you want to play the games? Um, because I am... As I mentioned earlier at the beginning of this podcast, I am playing The Last of Us Part 1. This is going to be like my th third attempt playing the game. Uh, and I'm happy to say that I, after all the other attempts that I've played, this one, I am at the farthest I've been. So I'm actually like in the second chapter. The story... I, I, if I would have played this game... When it first came out back in the PS3 days, it probably the the story would have been like it probably would have would have hit me just right. We're like, man, this is cool, this is awesome. It would, when it was at the height of zombies, do you guys remember that? I mean, zombies were freaking everywhere. I mean, that was like the the thing when you had The Walking Dead. Um, you just had, I mean, you had video games just based off of zombies. Uh, it was, they were everywhere. It was the zombies was, you know, and the zombie survival. It was huge. I mean, the walking dead was, was massive and it didn't end until recently. I think late last year in 2022, when they had their final half season series finally show. So I think if I would have played last of us when it first released during the height of the zombie, uh, 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 the zombie mania i think it would have been perfect but you know playing the game now just being saturated with zombies it was just like okay i mean of, of course they're not traditional zombies you know they're people infected by spores and but but they become feral and shit like that it's, it's a zombie right they lose control of themselves and they're a horde of them to overtaking you know of course so you have to survive the the the, the hordes of zombies of of of, of uh, and there's there are variations, right? There's different types, but you know you gotta survive that. But then on the flip side of that, you know, with with uh, society crumbling, you get these bands of marauders and cannibals and just you know and anarchists and and you know all civilization just gets thrown out the window. So you know, playing the game, the story, I feel like it's uh, it's okay. It doesn't. It's not doing anything new uh, story wise. But the game, i am actually been enjoying it a little bit more. There are some moments where I got frustrated where I'm trying to, like, stealth through some of the uh, the human bad guys. I'm trying to get around them, but somehow, I guess, 
them being all hopped up on methamphetamines, they're able to spot me from across the room and I'm forced to have to shoot them. Which is fine because, you know, once you, once I grab my shot, the shotgun is a beast. That, that shotgun puts in work. Shotguns and Molotov cocktails, those weapons, those two right there, they put in some work. You, you could knock down a, a whole bunch of them. But, you know, me being a big fan of Metal Gear Solid and middle, the Metal Gear Solid series, you know, I wanted to go stealth and get around everything without being seen. And I tried that a couple of times and they just keep spotting me and spotting me. It's like, okay, okay. You know, maybe it's my fault. Maybe I'm not being patient enough. I'm not waiting around. I'm not getting their patterns because I kind of want to like go and play their, you know, I want to play, I want to get through the game. I want to, you know, get through it and, and, and finish it. And, you know, even though I was getting spotted, the fact that I could still kind of just blast my way through, it was, it's still fun. And it, it, it there is, it does add some tension when you're kind of sneaking around and there's a clicker right in front of you. And, you know, some of the clickers, um, that enemy type is they cannot see, but they have super sensitive hearing. So you have to be very slow when you still, you know, when you crawl by them and you have to like maybe throw a bottle or brick to distract them and everything. And I'm saying I'm not saying like the gameplay is doing something innovative, but it's it it, it does add some tension where it does become fun. Where like I, I, there's a couple of times where I'm like, like I'm holding my breath because like, oh, I hope I sneak by this, you know, and you can actually get it through. And, and, and that part does become fun, you know, um, going through going through areas that's infested with enemies and you're finding items to you're finding crafting items so you can make your weapons your your healing kits and stuff like that that is fun it is pretty cool going around and just playing as joel and just picking up things and, and putting it up opening up you know drawers and just, oh shit there's nothing in here okay look around oh here's gun parts to you know upgrade my weaponry um as a gun enthusiast there's some parts with firearms i'm just like okay but I understand you gotta gamify it because if not, it just it just wouldn't be possible, right? Like, how do you add, how do you add clip capacity to your revolver? Well, <laughs> you can't, okay. But you gotta, you have to gamify, it, right? Because if not, then you know it just it doesn't become that it doesn't become fun. But that part, you actually getting to sneak around and just getting items and picking it up and, and gathering things and crafting things on items, like that is pretty cool. It does add some tension, especially when you're trying to craft items when there's enemies trying to, starting to surround you. That does add some tension to the game, which has been making it more excited. So, you know, me going back to the game and actually playing it, that has become more fun. Yes, I have, though I was frustrated in some parts, but for the most part, the, the actual gameplay is, is, is fun. And I have been having a joy. The story... Not so original. It's okay. Um, uh, the voice actors. Who was it? <sighs> Troy Baker and who, who plays the girl? I don't know what. Um, I mean, they're 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 good, but like honestly, like I don't care. I just want just let me play. Let me play. And it's funny because when you hit pause on the game, which is a good feature. That I'm glad this game has right because you know some games where you hit pause it just cuts the whole the, the whole the whole scene just fast forwards to the next one like oh great I don't I want to watch a scene but I gotta go use the restroom right on this game like when you hit pause like you know it pauses the scene where you're at and it gives you the option it says skip movie so just there just with that phrase skip movie it just lets you know like they really wanted this to be like a cinematic experience and look some people appreciate that right. They're like, oh, you know, I play this because I want a good story. You know what else? You know what else has a good story? A book. Try reading it, right? So, you know, fast forward now. Um, fast forward. You know, now let's go to, you know, Sunday night. Uh, the Last of Us T HBO series came out. Uh, I didn't watch it the night of. I did watch it tuesday i think i watched like the first 40 minutes one day and then i watched the other half the other the other part the day after while i was exercising um i i think the, i think the show is better than the game uh because i feel like the game wanted to be a tv series a a, a, a movie and now when you see it like in this format how hbo is doing it like honestly if you haven't played the games like you're probably fine just watching TV series. Um, as fun as the gameplay is, it's nothing that's going to be like, oh, man, I got to play this. It's fun. Um, but 
I wouldn't say, you know, you just watching the TV sh- the series, you're probably fine. Uh, Pedro Pascal, a phenomenal actor. The guy does whatever he does. He's, he freaking knocks out the park. Especially um, if you guys ever seen the Netflix show uh, Narcos. The, I mean, of course, we've seen him as a Baryon on Game of Thrones. But when I got to see him on Narcos, I was like, man, this guy, this guy's pretty good. You know, and him transitioning from Spanish to English, like phenomenal. And I know he's done some other stuff too, but uh, on The Last of Us, you know, the the first beginning part, um, you know, when they're in Austin, like I was like, all right, hurry up. And then when the, when when the when the shit finally hit the fan, okay, and, and the show started picking up, like okay, good, now we, now we're getting in the fun parts, you know. And then, you know, so far, and it seems like you know, HBO and the showrunners and uh, all the all the producers over there. They're, they're, they're getting the source material and they're respecting it and they're following it and whatever little deviations are doing it is it's, it's there's some things that you kind of notice you're like oh okay they they race swapped this character okay cool whatever uh but you know it means they make little deviations from it but for the most part it's it's, it's following the game which i'm a fan of um because if you're going to just make something different just Call it something else and, and then call it, you know, name it something else and call it a whatever, right? But the thing is, we have two games. I, I, as of right now, I, I think Neil Druckmann, the, the, the story writer or the, the, the head director for The Last of Us, I think he said there's more story to tell. I don't know that he just wants to do some spinoffs or continue the story. I don't know. But we do know that there is two games. Um, the second game kind of, I haven't played it, but it, apparently the second one, you know, has some polarizing ending or polarizing storytelling, but that's it. We have two, 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 two games. Now, I'm curious how HBO is going to handle this. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure HBO is getting good reviews for the game. I, I'm, I, there's no doubt about that, right? So let's just say they go through season one. Uh, I don't know anywhere between eight to ten episodes, maybe. I don't know. That's usually what the HBO format is for the game one, and then you know they do another eight to ten episodes for uh, game two, The Last of Us Part Two, right? After that happens, wh- what do they do? Do you think they will graciously bow out and say like, "All right, this is the story. We're gonna wait until they make more games," or you think they're gonna start making like more spinoffs and just like you know, kind of what they did with, like, House of Dragons. Like, well, we don't have the source material, but we're going to make our own shitty story, and we'll see how that goes. I'm kind of the boat of thinking if they get enough money, they're going to be like, well, let's just make shitty spinoffs, and if they like it, they like it, and they don't, they don't, and then who cares because the hardcore fans going to watch it anyway. Well, you know, I'm not the hardcore fan, so I'm, I'm fine with that. Like, I still... I have yet to watch the last episode of House of Dragons just because, like, okay, I got to the near the end of it, I'm like, whatever, I'm done. I'll, I'll watch it one day, but not yet. But anyways, guys, um, The Last of Us TV show, the fr- and mind you guys, this is just the first episode. The first episode, I would give you a thumbs up. I would say watch it if you're a fan. Even if you're not a fan, watch it. If you enjoy The Walking Dead, and, and that's another thing too, right? Like if you watch The Walking Dead, watch this one. You might like it too. Um, Walking Dead started off great. That first season, phenomenal. I enjoyed it. Second season, they ended up at a at a farm. Like, okay, well, you know what? Let's 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 take a season to you know get these learn more of these characters and stuff like that. And then, you know, now they end up in a prison. Like, all right, man. Well, now we're seeing some more stuff. And then here's the governor. Okay, the dude's crazy. Now here's the governor again. I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm done. I checked out. And then honestly, I mean, I I, I feel like the over, the the Walking Dead just kind of overstayed its welcome. At a certain point, like, all right, guys, let's wrap it up. It's done. Let's go. But when when a show is printing money, I'm pretty sure the the companies are like, yeah, yeah keep milking it. So I just I just don't want to see. Even though I'm not a big fan of The Last of Us, um, I just don't want it to become something where it just gets driven into and it becomes complete shit. That, that's just me as a as as a I want to say, as a as a fan of video games. I'm not, say, I'm not gonna say a fan of the game because the game's okay, but I'm I'm not by no means am I considering myself a fan because I, I have my critiques about the game, and from what I've heard about the second one, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have even more critiques about it. But 
hopefully, if I could finish this first game, I plan on uh, talking to my friend Ruben and see if I could borrow his copy of Last of Us Part Two, and we'll get to see where that goes, and hopefully we'll finish it. We'll see. Continue playing it. But anyways, guys, we're coming up in an hour. I want to say thank you for hanging out. I know the beginning was a little, a little rough, and then halfway through the episode, I was kind of like just motor-mouthing. But look, guys, I like doing the podcast. It's good practice for me to talk. It's a good way for me to practice talking because Lord knows I need it, right? I talk way too fast. And it's something just for me to look forward to, to you know, give you some of my thoughts, what how my, you know, what my thinking is and what my process is and writing things down. Guys, if you guys enjoy this you want maybe could um if you like what you hear you enjoy this feel free to drop by my streams i like i'm streaming on twitch monday tuesdays thursday fridays sometimes on saturdays if i have something going on um you drop by there you can hang on the discord i'm always throwing out questions for the podcast and trying to get interactive with my little community you just want to if you guys just enjoy video games you know this could be a spot for you to hang out if you want to help out you can tell your friends about it word of mouth does not hurt you if you want to retweet that doesn't cost you anything if you want to help out financially you can always donate and now guys i'm not asking for you know a boatload of money i'm not i just want this podcast to be self-sustained that way it could just cover itself i don't have to worry about it because i know you guys work hard for your money and it, i'm not and, and i wouldn't want to take away from you unless you feel like it's something you really want to help out and if not, it's okay. You just tell your friends about it or just listen and give it a like and retweet and stuff like that. But anyways, guys, I'm done for the night. Continue playing games. Continue watching TV. Continue exercising, eating well. Take care of yourselves mentally, physically. You know, take care of yourselves because, you know, we're not here for a long time and you never know you could go when you could go. So enjoy the time you're here, guys. Make the most out of it. Talk to your friends. Talk to your family. You know, be, be, be a good person. Be someone that you that other people want to be around, right? Don't be volatile. Don't be hostile. Just be a nice person. Treat others like you want to be treated. Play some video games. Have a good time. We'll come back next week. We'll talk some more. And we'll leave it at that. Bye, guys. I love you. See you next time.